Estonia today. It's a very unique piano. It's a, it's an Estonia piano. It's a um, it's a. Can you grab this for me? Piano was uh, when they reopened after the communists uh, came here. They closed the factory and they reopened the factory in uh, in 1952. And if you bring the camera, hold on one second. Wait, wait. Ow, my hand my hand just got caught there. Uh, you bring the camera here and you'll see inside there, but it's a very unique piano that uh, the Estonia company made, which is a semi-grand, and it's uh, lit literally half the size between my favorite, which is Jerry Lee Lewis on this piano. It's not a Jerry Lee Lewis piano. Well, it is. It is actually. It's open like this. <laughs> have either a right brain side, which is for creativity and big concept, and, and the rational or, huh? the but other one the, is the, the left side is the rational, logical, mathematical, so on and so forth, and for fighting for control. Maybe. One wants to stay in control. This is your, this is your creative side, uh, being uh, you know, a reporter and a producer and so on and so forth, but actually if you're involved in the editing and the specific things and everything else, then that's the other side of your brain. So. Uh, maybe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys need more light? Do you want to open no, that a bit no. or close it? Or? 
Et ma ei tiiks, oh, et kui saaks on vest in Estonia. Uh-huh. He's almost retired already. Uh-huh. He's half Chinese. Oh, yeah? Yeah, okay. So what's the problem of uh, with the chiropractic in Estonia? Well, basically, uh, chiropractic uh, medicine right now is not regulated in Estonia as it is in all other advanced countries. Estonia is now part of the European Union, and I think that the European Union and Estonians expect to be brought up to the same levels as other advanced countries with respect to medical care and with respect to uh, many other things. And with respect to chiropractic medicine and osteopathic medicine, I'm a I'm an osteopathic physician. I'm also a, a chiropractic physician. And in uh, the countries where uh, where I have practiced in America, where I practiced in Los Angeles, and I practiced uh, in Toronto, I have licenses in various states in America. The regulations are set up in such a way that you must go through exactly like a, a medical doctor or any other type of doctor. You have to go through specific. A uh, number of years of uh, of university at approved and accredited uh, universities, which give a degree program, and then even after you've passed that, you still have to are required to pass the uh, government examinations or government regulated or affiliated examinations that enable you to have an actual license to practice medicine or chiropractic medicine in this case, and. Um, as of this particular point in time, Estonia still does not have those regulations in place. And what happens is it, it creates a vacuum whereby uh, charlatans or fake doctors, whatever you want to call them, uh, come out and say, yes, I am doing chiropractic, uh, chiropractic uh, medicine, and uh, the next thing you know, I'm the, on the receiving end of patients that have been actually turned into patients uh, by the um, malpractice of these types of individuals that are saying that they do chiropractic but have no license and have not received any proper training to do this type of uh, medical care. And so it's a big problem. Of course, it's very difficult to determine the border between just touching um, another people and healing. Uh, well... Yeah, we. I mean, as far as healing is concerned, you know, when we study medicine, uh, we study chiropractic or osteopathic medicine or any other type of medicine in North America or generally now in the European Union, uh, we don't generally even use the word healing. We stick sort of to the scientifically proven side of it. And um, as far as the word healing is concerned, in my opinion, uh, the body actually heals itself. And what I really do as a manual medicine doctor is I enable the body, I facilitate the body to heal itself. The body has the powers to heal itself. It just needs to have no interference. And there's many different uh, causes for interference within the immune system, within the nervous system, which controls and regulates healing. If you remove that interference and facilitate proper communication and proper uh, you know, energetics within the body, the body actually heals itself. How can uh, fake doctors damage people or harm them? Well, in the... Uh, in the case of uh, chiropractic medicine, for instance, uh, they will do um, they will perform uh, spinal manipulation, which is absolutely regulated and uh, controlled uh, in other advanced countries by uh, by government affiliated organizations. And uh, what they do is they will you know they will have seen someone do it somewhere or or whatever, and they'll actually manipulate the spinal vertebrae, the spinal bones, which surround and protect the spinal cord and the nervous system. And um, if, they are, if they manipulate incorrectly, they can break bones, they can cause uh, strokes, they can even cause death. Uh, I don't know of any cases here in this particular, in, in Estonia, where death has been caused by this, but, uh, you know, they can cause many problems to occur. Uh, some of the more common problems that I've seen patients come to me with that have been caused by uh, you know these these uh, people that call themselves chiropractors or, or, or osteopaths um, are numbness in the hands, l- lack of use of ability of the fingers uh, uh, and the hands and the arms, pain in the neck, severe pain that that never seems to go away, inability to sleep, a neurological type of uh, you know dysfunction, um, you know blurry blurred vision, headaches. Um, 
and, 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 and various number of different types of syndromes that I've seen patients show up with here and say to me, uh, you know, can you help me? I went to see this, this person that said they were doing chiropractic uh, uh, and uh, they, they did something to my neck and the next thing I know I've been in terrible pain and it hasn't gone away and I've been suffering for years. Now the problem with these patients is they're terrified of having this type of procedure performed again. And I have to reassure them that I have all of the proper qualifications. You know, I have uh, the doctorates that, and I've had to pass all of the proper examinations and, and have the experience so that I'm able to call myself an expert in this area and I'm able to perform this safely. But many of them are very, very terrified. Uh, do you know how many fake doctors or fake chiropractics here in Estonia and where do they uh, do their job? I, I have no idea how many there are, how many there would be, I can't say that. But of course one already is enough. One is enough, more, one is more than enough because uh, of the patients that I've seen, their lives have been, um, their quality of life is suffering terribly. They've been in terrible pain following these types of spinal manipulations uh, that have been done incorrectly and uh, there needs to be something done about it. What I'm doing about it is um, I've taken the bull by the horns over the last uh, five years and formed uh, the Estonian Manual Medicine and Chiropractic Association, the uh, Esti uh, Manuelesse Medicine ja Chiropractica Celts, <coughs> and that's emmks.com or emmks.ee. And um, uh, I formed this association in order to be able to um, work with the government to provide um, uh, uh, guidelines for standardization of care for chiropractic medicine and osteopathic medicine and manual medicine generally in Estonia. Uh, we have the support of the World Federation of Chiropractic. We have the support of the European Council or European um, Union, uh, European Chiropractic Union uh, in, in the advanced European Union countries. We have the support of a number of different organizations including the patients' uh, rights organizations and Anna Veskemeister is here to talk about that here today. But uh, it's very difficult, it takes time and um, uh, we, are, uh, we are making a lot of headway but we're still in the process of actually developing uh, Estonia so that Estonian people are protected from the charlatan practices and the inappropriate practices of people that call themselves doctors that are not doctors. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And connections now, my Just kidding. Just kidding. My thing, how do you That's the joke. Kui tõsine see liba arstide probleem Eestis on, kes just tegelevad manuaalteraapia ja kiropraktikaga? No, probleem on tegelikult selles, et need, kes ennast manuaalterapeutideks ja kiropraktikuteks siin kutsuvad, ei ole arstid. Nad on saanud mingisugused väga pealiskautsed kursused või no, tähendab mitte pikkajalist välja õpet mm -hmm. sellel konkreetsel erialal. Ja ega ma ei tea kõikid eest rääkida, aga, aga väga vajaks Eesti regulatsioone, et mida võib näiteks teha kiropraktik ja mida võib teha kiropraktika arst, sest näiteks nagu doktor Oola ütleb, et kaela manipulatsioone tavaline kiropraktik teha ei tohiks. Vaid sellepärast tema pöörduski meie poole, et, et Eesti aidata need regulatsioonid välja töötada. Ja see osutus selles mõttes keeruliseks, et me kutsekoda ei tööta arstide kriteeriume välja. Ja sel juhul tuleks juba pöörduda arstiritsensi saamiseks tervise ametisse. Aga siin on nagu see, see, see ala nagu kaotab mingisuguse ühtsuse ära niimoodi. Ja, ja selles mõttes Allan Oola üritaski läbi siis seltsi loomise, et, et see selts oleks siis koguks enda ümber sellised arstid, kes on vastutustundlikud ja kes tahavad seda ala korrastada Eestis, et tõesti ei tekiks kahju patsientidele. No on teil teada sellised juhtumeid, kus tõesti tõsist kahju on tekitatud? Ei, meil on teada paar juhtumit. Meil ei ole massiliselt need juhtumeid, aga, aga meie on jõudnud paar juhtumit, kus, kus tõepoolest no, inimene on peaaegu invaliidistunud. Et, ja, ja riiklik meditsiinisüsteem on tunnistanud tõepoolest invaliidiks või üsnaka töövõimetuks. Ja see on siis ära rikutud nende võltsarstide poolt? 
Ilmselt on, seda ei saanud päris kindlalt öelda, aga, aga doktor Oro hinnangul see võib nii olla. Ja, ja kuna sellised juhtumid on maailmas olnud ja tema praktikas ka, et, et ütleme, inimene, kes ei ole näiteks õppinud, saanud korraliku välja õpet ka elomanipulatsioonide osas, et, et on, enda, ka minule endale on seda sama juhtunud, miks ma selle asjaga väga haakusin. Et ka minul on tehtud kaela manipulatsiooni, mis tegelikult kahjustas. Et ma võin ennast kas või näiteks tuua. No kirjeldagegi oma juhtumit üldse. Mul olid selgroga probleemid, alaseljaga probleemid ja käisin manuaalt rääbtööti juures. Ja kui ma jõudsin doktor Oolo juurde, siis, siis ta teatas, et mul oleks just kui kaks auto avariid üle elatud minu kaela vaadates. Mm-hmm. Ja Ühte ma tean, kus oli kukkumisega seotud, aga teine ei saanud muud olla kui, kui see kaela manipulatsioon, sest teist, ütleme, kaela ole mingit otsest või, või siis ka kaudset mõju avaldavat kukkumist ei ole olnud. Et selles mõttes see tegi mind mõtlikuks ja, ja kui minu juurde hakkasid jõudma sellised juhtumid, kus, kus inimesed on käinud kuskil eropraktiku või, või siis manuaalterapeuti juures ja jõuavad siis siia ja saavad abi, et siis mul hakkab nii see mõtlema. Et ilmselt vajaks see regulatsioone, vajaks kindleid kriteeriumi, mis sugused ülikoolid või instituudid on siis eete nähtud, või ütleme omavad litsentsi, mis sugused ülikoolid välismaal omavad litsentsi selliste erialade välja õppeks, mida praegu on väga paljud taastusavagi arstide nime all töötavaid inimesi. No muidugi probleem algab sealt peale, kui, kui hakatakse võtma raha. Muidu ei ole ju teise inimese puudutamine sugugi keelatud. Ja. No siin ongi see, et, et kuna inimene läheb praegu sellise arsti juurde omal riisikul suuresti, siis Ja väga raske on tõestada. Patsientil on üldse väga raske tõestada, et ta on kuskil kahju saanud tekitatud. Mm-hmm. Et, ja, ja ega seda ei saagi üheselt tõestada, sest et ta on selline kahe inimese arsti ja patsiendi vaheline protsess. Ja, ja tihti lõbu on see pigem inimese tunnetuse küsimus, kui tähendab ei jälgita ja operaatidega pidevalt inimest enne mm-hmm. seda protseduuri ja pärast protseduuri. Kui seda tehtaks, siis oleks võimalik kindlalt paperil turvastada, et on tehtud kahju. Et no, see on üks võimalus. Mm-hmm. Selge. Et siis ongi kõik praegu. Mm. Tegelikult selle... Ma ei tea, see jääme no, rääkimata. Et... No, et me haakusime siis selle Eesti maanolse meditsiini ja kiropraktika seltsiga, mida doktor Ollol on loonud et neid regulatsioone Eestisse siis aidata luua. Mm-hmm. Pöördusime kutse koja poole, nii et me oleme nagu kutse standardi välja töötamise protsessi käivitanud, ja, aga see on praegu niimoodi veninud, loomulikult ka kodelepärjääride tõttu. Aga me oleme pöördunud ka sotsiaalministeriumi poole sellise sooviga, et kirjapratika arstide standardi välja töötada, Sellele me ei ole veel aasta jooksul vastust saanud. Ja, ja üldse manuaalterapia arstid on Eestiski üritanud seda protsessi käivitada aastaid. Et ma leian, et patsiendil on siiski hea, kui oleks olemas mingisugused regulatsioonid ja litsentsid. Ja kui patsiendile teata, mida üks või teine arst või kiropraktik või manuaalse meditsiini spetsialist võib teha ja mis on tema, tema pädevus. Mm-hmm. I could give the phone number of this phone email. Only Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks for checking. <laughs> it's okay. I'm bringing in his own table. Uh, yeah. Can I have another card, please, sweetie? Yeah. Oh, here's one. I have one here. I found it. So, um, they can reach, um, uh, oh, 
And emmks, it's only dot com. Cool. It seems so to be working. Cool. I don't know why, but something is. Uh, but that's okay. I don't know my own phone number here. But I never, I never call myself at this number. Or they can also call five one one seven eight six nine. So those would be the two numbers that they could call to get information mm -hmm. about EMKKS or information about uh, getting proper care. And this is the... Yeah, Kai Palamas, she's in Tartu. She was damaged uh, by uh, one of these types of doctors and I had to correct the damage. It was, she, was in, she was in bed, almost hospitalized practically, oh. in bed for two years afterwards. So she was in very, bad, very, very bad shape. She couldn't move, she couldn't function, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't basically do anything. She was... Uh, Almost an invalid for two years following this. Okay. So, so that's a good chance. I, I had a minor crash on in the weekend. Okay. And we, we can check the state of the neck. Sure. Maybe. Let's look at that. And your name, so I have records of everything. Because I can't do anything without records, so I need to do it properly. Just put in your name and your email address. And print so I can because I may send you I may send you uh, exercises by email possibly. So can I, can I read that? Maybe print the email for me very clearly. So if I get the wrong. Uh, Thirty something. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, tell me what happened. Just quickly, so I have a record. Uh, there was a little little car crash. Uh, yes. In uh, during the race. Oh. During the race, you were racing. Yes. Okay. And you hit from the front. They hit from behind. Where from front. Yes. You hit into a wall or something. Oh, uh, the tree. <laughs> But this was a minor, That's dangerous. minor accident. That's what happened with our famous rally driver, right? Eh? Went into a tree. Uh, okay, and what happened at the time? You felt some discomfort or pain in your neck? No, you not at all. The next day or the day after? Two not days at later? all. You felt nothing? Have you yes, the, the, the speed was not when so... When did you start to feel something in your neck? One or two days later? If uh, I try to imagine when I move the neck, mm -hmm. I feel something. Mm -hmm. But but uh, stiffness, conga, maybe, but okay. but very light stiffness. Okay. All right. So that's what you feel now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you ever had neck pain before? No. No. And I I don't have a pain even. Any headaches? No. Mm -hmm. I have never had any headache. No arm pain at all. Perhaps the blood no. is running. Pain in the arms or hands or anything like no. that? No. Okay, so that sounds like it's very simple. And then we'll just do it like this. Now, what, you're going to take your shirt off, just your shirt, that's mm -hmm. all. And I'm going to... And, and the glasses is also. And actually, yep, we can do it that way. What I will do... Camera. No, I turn the other way, but the camera will see it this way. I'm just going to check the ranges of motion. First, uh, stand up for one minute and let me look at what's happening here. To you. So, this right side of your neck is either swollen or, if we turn this way to the camera, turn facing that way. My parum Kyle on Ulest Sia. This part of your neck is up, and even the camera can see that it's flattened here and raised up on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. So now we need to ascertain whether or not it's normally like that, or whether or not it's like that as a result of some muscle pull or some swelling. Also, we can see Ulest Sia, 
this area here and not on this side. So it almost looks as if there's a little bit of inflammation or swelling in this region when I look at it that we don't see on the other side. And you may feel a difference between this right side and the left or a difference on the right in this part as opposed to this. You feel the softness here and you feel uh, roske or konge here and kergelt on the mm -hmm. on the basak on the left side. Yes? You you feel it yes. yourself when mm -hmm. I press there. So let's uh, I'm trying to think what's the best angle for the camera to, to look at this. Um, let's, uh, let's sit back down again facing that way. Okay. And actually, you know what, we can do it. He's there. Let's turn around. You face the other way. You stay there. This, you go this way. Then that way, the camera will see a little bit better what I'm doing. Okay. So I will mark down these findings so that I know what's happening. This area is elevated and it looks as if it's shortened a little bit so we'll mark it in red it means that the muscles in that region this is a, a examination chart that I developed for my course mm -hmm. uh, for the trigenics so what we do is we just check the ranges of motion and see if they're the same maybe they are maybe they aren't let's find out let it go good box, good box. and so I can see here that let it go relax completely mm -hmm. there is relax just let me do all the moving you don't do anything there okay there's definitely less range of motion relax completely i'm not going to do anything sudden so don't worry we're not going to do mm -hmm. anything this now you can see this range of motion as opposed to this range of motion now if you sit facing that way the camera will be able to see it so straddle razza is the razza simple so he's going to sit this way now if we see here, this range of motion as opposed to this range of motion is much more on this side as opposed to this side. This side you feel the restriction, mm -hmm. this side you feel it's quite loose. Do you notice that? Yes. You feel? Yeah, I It see. stops here. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't, it goes kind of all the way. At the end it goes a little bit more. So that's coming from this area right here, which, is the la which are the lateral muscles in your neck, the muscles on the side of your neck which are contracted on the right hand side so they're in a little bit of spasm so those muscles for some reason mm -hmm. are pulling a lot harder right now than the other side okay you can feel that and that's a, that's controlled by neurology it's controlled by the neurological input into the muscle so what we have to do we have to change the neurological input into this muscle we have to lessen the number of signals almost like turning down the number of signals that go into that light which would turn down the amount that the light is 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 a beaming, you know? And we can do that with the trigenics. So I'm going to mark that on the chart right here. Okay, we mark that on the chart. That's on the right side. So we mark in that that muscle on that right hand side is contracted. I've got that marked in. Okay. And the other muscle that's quite tight on your, in your case is this one. Now, whether or not that's from the accident or whether that's from sitting at a desk working at whatever, a lot of people, but you're left-handed. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're left-handed means really theoretically it should be on this side, but it's not. It's on the right side in here. You see, the difference between the two is considerable on the right. So you have a slight problem on the right side that you don't have on the left. I can press here a lot. Mm -hmm. but if I press here a little bit, you see you kind of squirm. You kind of don't like that. Natu uh, kinavaros. Mm -hmm. Right? Not to come up to that. Uh huh. Okay. So this is an area that needs to be attended to, and if it's left alone, often it it may develop into a further problem over a long period of time. So we may not tomorrow have some headaches or some neck problem or whatever, but maybe in a couple of years, if this is not corrected now, mm -hmm. it could develop. So it's important to fix these problems before they become bigger problems. Okay. What we're also going to do is we're going to check the motion of the bones, see if they're moving properly. And I can see in here that there is a definite restriction on the right, right in here, and also here. So this is interesting. The interviewer will be able to actually experience the treatment. That's a, that's a whole new perspective. <laughs> so you can talk from some degree of first-hand knowledge once you've actually experienced it. This is the other problem area just down here. You see this area doesn't hurt very much, nope. but this area is quite tender again, okay? So you've got a couple of bones in your neck 
all right, that uh, have rotated up and through here. They've, the muscles have been pulling so hard on these bones that the bones have kind of turned a little bit. They're kind of, they're kind of turning, Buddha, like this. And they're stuck a little bit this way. They're not moving quite the right mm -hmm. way. Also at the bottom, you have the same problem in here. And what can happen is that can cause, eventually, if it turns a lot, it can com the uh, compress these nerves and these, mm -hmm. then you can start to get pain in the neck. You can get pain into the head where the nerves are going or pain down into the arms where the nerves also travel from the lower neck. So you do have a little bit of a problem in there. And I'm going to mark those down on the chart. I'll just put it right here on your back. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got C1 to the right, C2 to the right. Three is left and seven is right. That's the chart of the spine. Okay. What I want you to do is hold your head this way. We're going to check and see if the muscles are strong. Hold it like that. Hold it hard. Okay. Now relax. Hold it this way. Hold it hard. And relax. Hold it this way. Hold it hard. And relax. Good. And this way. Hold it hard. Okay. Very good. All right. So what we're going to do now is you're going to breathe in through your nose and stomach. So the stomach goes out like this. Cooked values. This way. Yep, exactly. And you did some yoga, I think. And out. Good. And when you breathe out, I guess out. Okay. Now, Guisano Hinga Valias, Ligate Kayo Nemodi. Nemodi. Okay. Okay. Not that can I took a vesti. So you're going to pull back fairly hard this way when I tell you. Breathe in for me. Breathe out. Okay, ligote, Kyle. Ligote, nemodi. Yeah, load box. But I'm going to hold it. You're going to try to do that. Hinga sisse. And go. Pull. Pull the head. More. Rock him. Rock him. Rock him. Uh huh. Load box. Load box. Uh huh. Uesti. Load box. Uesti. Hinga sisse, ninaga. Ninaga. Good box, good box, good. West team, good box, okay. Okay, now what you're gonna do is move your hand this way as you breathe out lightly. Hinga sisse, press into my hand, go ahead, it's the way I showed you. That's it, drop the shoulder down, there you go. Very nice, okay, so that just move that. And again, very good. And relax, perfect. And one more time, breathing. And again, I'm actually going to be teaching at the massage school, mm -hmm. uh, some of the massage therapists, and I'm hoping to teach some of the physiotherapists. Some of the physiotherapists in Stony have been my students already. Laurie Ranama, yes. Martin Vahemetz were all my, uh, Preet the Tenista were all my students a few years ago where I taught them some of the principles and how to do trigenics, perform this type of manual medicine, and they're very, very good, very good uh, therapists. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're, gonna, we're going to lie you on your back and we're going to check some of the muscles in here. On the back? Yes. Yeah, we're going to... Celery, celery, celery. Yeah, celery, PSCO. Okay, and I'm just going to come up toward me a little bit farther. Come toward me a little bit more. Come up. Ulest. Yeah? Okay, we're going to check and see if these muscles are all working properly. Hold your neck here, hold it as hard as you can. Don't let me push it down. Hoya, took a nasty. Hoya. Hoya, ulest. Hoya. Good box. Hoya, ulest. Okay, so that's quite strong. Let's turn it all the way now. Hoya. Good box. Hoya. Good box. Okay, so the muscles are quite strong in there, which is good. That's a good sign. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lie you over on your stomach. Cook. Koholi, 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 koholi. Ugh, it's very difficult for me. Ugh, you know. My upi nesti kada skim all and laps and no ughs, no sounds like this. I didn't learn it. So matian minema esti esti kelt dundi. So you have also a little problem right here. Okay, one, two, three, four. And you actually have a little bit of a curvature in your spine here. Yes, I know. 
Um, so it would be a good idea, probably if you haven't had an, a Röntgen in a long time, to get an actual X-ray, so you can see what's going on. Because here is a problem. Good luck. <laughs> well, it's very really sensitive. Yeah, points. but you have this problem here. You see, that's why it's sensitive. Good luck. Valusia. Valus, goody, goody. Uskamato. Kudi. Kudi, uh, it's only coming with the young uh, children, uh, Kudi, here. Ah. It's all, you must still be very young uh, in your heart. In, yes. You must be very young because only a Kudi coming with the young ones, not the older ones. There is absolutely so, no pain. No? Okay. <laughs> and I have never had any kind of pain in my uh, back. You just have my... stiffness in here now. Okay, so we're going to do again a little bit more work on this. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to just turn your head lightly as you breathe out, very lightly, super lightly, and you're going to relax this area as you breathe out, okay? Hinga sisa, and valias, ligate, pia, pura, desi pola, other way. Yeah, but don't lift it, just 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 roll it. I don't want you to lift it. No, no, good luck, good luck. When you breathe out, gui hinga valias, pura, pia, eyeglass out, ja kergelt, kergelt, nimodi, nimodi. Nemodi, okay, Hinge, Valas, Pura, Daisy Pora, Pura Daisy Pora. Yeah, good luck. Don't, don't move so fast. Re think about relaxing this muscle when you move your head, okay? Think about relaxing right here, exactly. Mm -hmm. Hinge, Sissa, Valas, there you go. Very nice. Good luck, good luck. Nice and easy, not so hard. Just relax everything as you move. Hinge, Sissa, Nina got ya, Valas. That's good. Blue box, Uesti, again, turning, good. Now what it looks like, breathing in, I'm doing, and what it is are two different things. Turning, blue box. Now what I'm going to do is a very soft, soft manipulation here, nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed, that's good. Good, very nice, very good. Perfect. Now you're going to just push your head straight down toward the floor, Inga Sissa. Valias, push the face down, Nagoala. Look at the Nagoala. Uh huh. Good box. Uesti, one more time. It's going to be a little bit tender here. That's good. Good box, okay. And then just relax completely, relax. This little kudi there, huh? It's just only, I only see this in children. I don't understand why you have this. Lie on your back. Something. Uh, Still uh, very young inside here. I don't know. I hope so. The nervous system hasn't uh, grown up yet, or something. I don't know <laughs> what's going on. Hmm. Wonder if I should turn uh, turn you the other way so they can see that I'm working on this side. I guess it doesn't really matter. What you're going to do now is you're going to lift your head this way and turn to the left as you breathe out very lightly, very easily, breathing in. And lift slowly, and turn, 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 good, and relax, breathing, and turn, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. breathing, and turn. Relax it, stay there, stay there, just relax completely, relax that. Drop your hand, that's good. Okay, very good. Now, in your case, it's not necessary to do any uh, really heavy manipulation. Uh, I'm just doing what we call mobilization. It's very light, it's mm -hmm. very easy, just relax completely. Just a little bit of mobilization. Now, you could hear there that there was a little bit of a noise mm -hmm. <clears throat> and most people you get a lot more than that your neck's in fairly good shape you know comparatively speaking to almost all of the other patients i see which have some very serious problems but you do have some slight problems in here that may develop into bigger problems if you don't take care of them which is a reason why you might want to see a manual therapist that or a manual or a manual medicine doctor like myself that specializes in this to be able to take care of it so that it doesn't become more of a problem. You can feel in here, as opposed to this side, this is kind of flat, but this has a bit of a bump right in here. Uh -huh. So this is an area where the bones are twisted a little bit. Eventually, 
could lead to some deteriorative deterioration and some changes in there that are not so <coughs> great. So what we're going to do now is you're going to bring your right ear to your right shoulder as you breathe out, breathing in. And breathe out, right ear to right shoulder, hard. Tuke vesti. Suru, suru minun puolet, tuke vesti. Pia, pia. Oh, pia, yeah. Pia, nemadi, 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 nemadi. Inga sisse. Valjus. Suru. Lodvaks. Lodvaks. Maybe I'll turn this a little bit. Maybe the camera should come to from this side, yes. Sisse. Valjus. Suru. That's it. Ludvox, Ludvox, Westy, and go. Ludvox, Ludvox, Westy, and go. Uh huh. Ludvox, Westy, and go. And let it relax. That's it. Let it go. Let it relax. Like that. And the thing about this is that there are so many structures in here. The one woman that was damaged that you're going to talk to, uh, Kaya, the blood vessels up and through here were being cut a little bit off. Getting So the blood going up into the brain was not going through mm -hmm. uh, properly. The nerves were also being cut off all in this area in the top right under her brain. We had to actually move this bone. It's almost like doing manual surgery. We had to move this bone under the base of her brain. We had to literally move it to take some of the pressure off the blood vessels and the nerves, and that helped her to get better. Unfortunately for you, you don't have anything like that. And if you did, it would be not uh, a lot of fun, uh, but uh, we were able to help her, and you'll be able to speak to her about that. There you go. Good. So that was just a little small manipulation that we did on the lower segments down in here. You didn't feel very much. But the, the scary thing is that doc, uh, people that say that they're doctors that haven't been trained properly will take a patient's neck, like your neck right now, uh -huh. and tell me how this feels. Does this feel very good? What if I took your neck now and just suddenly went <laughs> from one side to the other side? Do you think that that would be something you would like to have done? No, this is the way of killing. Okay, well, that's the way that that's the way that some people are doing this, mm -hmm. and there is many that they don't know what they're doing. And the point is, there's so many structures in the neck that can be damaged: the blood vessels, the nerves, the 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 the, the neck now. Let's just bring your head down this way and turn this way as you breathe out. Breathing in, breathe out, good, breathing, and out, mm -hmm. and stay that way, breathing, down and turn toward the camera, good, breathing, and down toward the camera, good, and relax. What I'm doing now is I'm actually changing the signal patterns from the brain, we train the brain to send a different signals to the muscles so the, su the muscles are actually behaving differently. Mm -hmm. This is what's called trigenics or trigenics. And this is the treatment that we're doing here where you're actually ex pressing against my hand and in doing that we're sending s signals to these muscles to tell these muscles to automatically relax. If you so that mu this muscle just relaxed on this side. Mm -hmm. It has no choice but to do okay. that. And that's the way that the body is wired. So we use the wiring. Breathe in, breathe out, come down, press down and turn. No, no, down. You gotta press. If you hold your head up, then it contracts the muscle. If you bring okay. your head down, it, it causes the muscle to relax. So all of the procedures we do work on neurological reflexes. Breathe, bring the head down, down. There, now the muscle's relaxing. Turn toward the camera, and again it's relaxing. You see how my thumb sunk in there? And then when I actually press on the nerve sensors inside the muscle, it causes them to send signals to the brain. That sends signals back. Okay. I'm going to face that one. And I will just finish it off with treatment. So I'm not completely happy with this yet. So what you're going to do is still pull back here as you breathe out. Breathing in. And breathe out. Go. And relax. Breathing. And go, and relax, good, now let's just line your stomach again, I'm just going to do one more little manipulation on this, line the stomach and we'll be finished, line the stomach, 
right there. That's it. Move up a little bit. Relax it completely. Just let it go. Let the, drop the shoulder down. That's it there. Don't move. Perfect. Very nice. Don't move. That was the one we had to do. That may have come out a little bit in that car accident. So to put it back in place again now uh, is important for you because if it stayed out of place for a long period of time, that would cause some problems. Don't move for about uh, 60 seconds. Just let that all settle. Let this all relax and let it settle and then we're all finished. You is to see ya. So that was a little bit of a shock, that one, huh? No. No shock? Uh, perhaps not. We just understand it, but I go. I still. Yeah. Ligate ka tura kergelt. So turn it to kergelt, but I go. No, no, not as stiff. Easier to move. Uh, easy to move, but there was no any big problem before. No. Either. Yes. You just had a little bit of stiffness. Just minor yeah. problem. But. You had a minor problem from what you were feeling. Mm -hmm. But when I examined you, I found that there were problems developing here. That you could see you weren't moving properly on one side, the other side was moving very well. These are the things that you need to address and attend to to prevent. Okay, yeah. that's good for you. Two mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. One one time. That's right. Okay, but no, we are done, yes? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. You didn't expect that today, huh? To have a little. Yeah, I just wanted to do uh, some kind of action for uh, making this story mm -hmm. more interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have this for you. I didn't have any of this for you. The heroin and cocaine overdose. Mm -hmm. But this, of course, was in uh, 2004 when we did the athletes. I went to the Olympics with the Estonian team. And I helped the Canadian team as well at that time. And uh, this is John Cusack, you know, uh, the actor, American actor. And uh, he was uh, quite famous. This was with me and her in, in New York. And this was, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings with the white hair, Geldof. Yes. yes. And he's also Magneto in X-Men. McKellen. McKellen, Ian McKellen, yeah. And um, um, uh, Peter Gabriel, a little bit uh, older there, Peter Gabriel, of course, Mark Palm, you know, him, and uh, John Bon Jovi, everybody knows John Bon Jovi, still making some good music, and David Bowie, this is a old pitch. This was in Japan, actually, uh, with Baruto, who's mm -hmm. actually number one, almost number one now in Japan. Created a big controversy when he had uh, didn't have black hair, that was a big thing, and football players, and the Olympic runners, Canadian, and girls.